In this course, we would be using Eclipse as the IDE. If you don't have Eclipse already installed, then you can use complete installation guide for Java and Eclipse, including Maven, which is present in our GitHub repository. If you go into Java web application step by step, this is where you end up. So this is the GitHub repository. And if you go further down in here, there's a PDF link. So if you open this guide up, it would help you to install Java, Eclipse, and also Maven. In this course, we would use the embedded Maven inside Eclipse. So you don't need to separately install Maven. All that you would need is to install Java and Eclipse. Once you have it ready, we are ready to go. Before we discuss any theory about web application, let's get our hands dirty and also start with creating our first step. By the end of this step, you would have a simple web application running in Tomcat. Let's get started. The simplest way to create a web application in Eclipse is by saying right click, new, other and type in Maven. We would say Maven project. Maven is a Java build tool and it helps us to manage all the dependencies for our web application. It's quite a simple tool if you understand it correctly. And if you create a web application as a Maven project, it brings in a huge deal of benefits which we will make use of during this course. So let's go ahead and click next Maven project and I would create a very simple project. I don't want to use archetypes. I mean archetypes are Maven's way of creating sample projects. In this particular course, I don't want to use archetypes because we want to configure each step ourselves. We want to do this course step by step. So I would create the web application step by step. So I choose create a simple project. I would say use default workspace location. Once I say use default workspace location, Eclipse would use the same workspace to store all the code. That's not a problem. So go ahead and use use default workspace location and click next. Any Maven project that we create needs to have a name. A name consists of two parts. One is group ID, the other one is artifact ID. Group ID is like package name. So I give in something like com dot in 28 minutes. That's what we are giving as group ID. And the artifact ID, it's our first web application. So I would say first web application. The version, don't really worry about it. Leave it at default. Packaging, I would change it to var. We want to create a web application. A web application is var. Var stands for web archive. Java, J, J, JAR stands for Java Archive. So we want to create a WAR, a web archive. We want to create a web application. So I choose a WAR. So I'll now go ahead and click Finish. Eclipse would take a while before it creates the first project. Once it's up and running, we can get started. Once you open up the project which was created, the first web application, you would see all the folders that you see on the screen right now. The important folders are Source, Main, Java. Source main Java is where we would put in all the Java resources. So whatever is shown as Java resources in here, the most important folder is source main Java. Source main resources consists of all the resources that we need as part of the source file. So if you need a properties file or if you need an XML file, you would put it in source main resources. We would not create any test code during this particular course. So you don't need to really worry about source test Java. But if you are interested in unit testing and you create unit tests, these are the folders where you would create those unit tests. Other than this, you'd see a deployment descriptor. Right now, if you double click on any of these, you'd see a message saying the web.xml does not exist. Don't worry about it. We would create a web.xml web very soon. And also, you'd see a pom.xml. So if I open the pom.xml, you'd see just a little bit of configuration. I mean, the group ID which we created, I mean, which we gave as input and the artifact ID and the version. All these were the inputs which we provided in the IDE earlier. And these were used to create a pom.xml. A pom.xml is the most important component which is used by Maven. Maven is a Java dependency management tool. To run a web application, you need a lot of jars. For example, if I'm running a web application with Spring Hibernate, then I need spring.jar, hibernate.jar. Instead of myself going individually and downloading each of the jars, I can ask Maven to download the jars for me. This work which Maven does is called dependency management. 
once we add a dependency in Pawn.xml, Maven would automatically go and get it from a repository and make it available for this project. We will use this feature of Maven extensively during this particular application. It, Maven is quite a very simple tool to understand and it makes the life of a web developer very, very easy. As a student, I really hate courses where I'm asked to copy a lot of stuff. I really like to do things step by step. I kind of give an exception to that rule in this first step alone. In my experience, I saw many students make error in the first step and unable to recover from it. So in this first step alone, we would copy three files from the repository. We would spend a lot of time analyzing them, but we would copy them for this step alone. The first file we would copy is pom.xml. So I would start from here and select the entire content of the file, copy it and open up the pom.xml that we have and paste it in. There are two important things that we would need to discuss about this pom.xml, which we will discuss very soon. That's pom.xml, the first file that we copied. The second file that we want to create is the login servlet.java. So what I'll do is I'll copy this entire code, control C, so right click, copy, and you can paste it directly in source main Java. So you can go to write source main Java and say right click, paste. There will be a few compilation errors which would be coming up. Don't worry about them right now. The last file which we will copy is the web.xml. It's in a folder called web inf so what i'll do is i'll create a folder called web inf so in web app i'll create a new folder called web inf and in here i'll also create a new xml file i'd want to call this web small web dot xml and i'll copy the content from here in there so i'll copy whatever is in here into this effectively there are three files that we have created the first one is the pawn.xml the in the pawn.xml we copied the content in we created a login servlet and we copied in the web.xml these are the three files that we copied in i'm sure this would be one of the last times we copy the entire file during this course after you copied in the files you can do a right click maven update project we have done a few maven changes and Ma we need to update those changes. So we do right click Maven update project. You'd see that all the errors disappear. And now we have a complete web application configured. Before we look into the actual content of the pom.xml login servlet.java and web.xml, let's try and run this application. There's a lot of magic that we created in these three small files that we added in. Let's see what that magic is right now so i'm doing right click run as maven build and you can type in tomcat 7 so there's a plugin called tomcat 7 that we configured we'll look into very soon and say run tomcat 7 colon run so it's tomcat 7 colon run and click run you'd see a lot of things happening in the console you would see that there are a lot of files getting created and also the tomcat server would be started now the Tomcat server is running and it also is printing the URL in here. So if you look at it in console, there would be somewhere it says HTTP colon localhost colon 8080 or whatever port you are using. Let's launch up a browser and type in localhost colon 8080 and press enter. You would see some response coming back. It says my first servlet and the heading is Yahoo. You might ask me, we have a servlet running printing my first servlet but how is it really working what is in this servlet who downloaded tomcat you have not downloaded tomcat at all until now right it's running in tomcat how is it possible and what is in the web.xml lot of questions unanswered we will try and answer these questions in the theory part of this particular step